Hey everybody, Kevin Mulm here in the Office of Youth and Adult Ministry, Two Minute Tuesday on February 27th. Well, it's February 27th, but it's also a leap year. So not only do we get an extra day this month, but this year. So I uh, hope you're planning on using that well, especially in this time of Lent. I have an extra day this year to grow in holiness. Uh, a couple of updates for you this week. Justice Outreach Project. I got the registration open for that last week. It took me a little longer to get things organized for that than I was intending, uh, but the registration is now open. Uh, Justice Outreach Project, if you've never been before, it's an incredibly unique experience. I would strongly encourage youth ministers, organize your kids and, and bring your group up. Uh, you know, from the, the USCCB's Renewing the Vision, we have eight components of comprehensive youth ministry, and justice and service is one of those. A lot of our programs really put a lot of emphasis on the catechesis and community form, uh, community building and leadership development. Uh, but if you're missing that component in your, in your ministry program of justice and service, JOP is a great way for you to that oper- offer that opportunity to your kids. Uh, it's, it's, it's really difficult to describe what JOP is. It's so unique and it's just, uh, it's a lot of fun and a ton of transformative experiences for our young people. Some details about JOP this year. Uh, we decided a couple years back after listening to some of the local Blackfeet who coordinate JOP, like Tony Running Fisher and Trish Devereaux and Lona Vale, we talked about alternating JOP to coincide with the Native American Indian Days every other year. And this year is one of those times where we're gonna uh, we're gonna be over the Native American Indian Day. So the schedule this year and will be in July 9th through the 14th in Browning. That's a Tuesday through Sunday, uh, and this provides us an opportunity to really experience some some really cool, unique cultural experiences that we wouldn't get uh, if we weren't over Indian Day. So I, I highly encourage you to do that. And so if your kids have been before, it also gives us an opportunity to, to show you something new about JOP. We're still going to do a lot of the same kind of hallmark things that we do a part of the week, especially when it comes to service, like helping to clean St. Michael Cemetery. We will go to Glacier National Park and do mass. We'll visit the various communities, the, the mission. We'll go to Heart Butte, all those sort of fun things with JOP. But we also so by by being over Indian Days, we get the chance to experience the powwow. We'll do an, the Indian relay horse races, which are a ton of fun. We get to do community feeds at the powwow and really engage with uh, with uh, people there throughout the week. So it's a it's a lot of fun. I highly encourage. I think every one of our high school students should do JOP at least once during their high school career. It's so unique and so valuable, and the and the transformation and just the witness to the faith and and providing service and in that community building is so huge at JOP. So mark your calendar for that, and you can find all the information and register online at dioceshelena.org slash JOP. I also think it's important to know, a lot of people have asked me about this, yes, you can do Justice Outreach Project and do that high school camp too at Legendary Lodge. Uh, So JOP runs Tuesday through Sunday, July 9th through the 14th. We're actually going to close out that Sunday uh, at the powwow grounds. It's the Native American Indian Days closing mass that Bishop Vetter will be presiding at. So it's a lot of fun uh, to be able to be up there and see that uh, with Bishop Vetter. So you can do JOP and then do the closing mass with Vetter and still get to Legendary Lodge for that high school camp too, which starts that Sunday, July 14th. All right, the National Eucharist of Congress. I haven't really uh, pushed this much yet, although the National Eucharist of Congress has certainly been pushing it on Catholic Radio and other ads. So there's a lot of interest and a lot of people who are have been asking me about whether or not we're going. Yes, the Diocese of Helena is coordinating a trip to the National Eucharist of Congress. Um, Bishop Vetter will be leading that pilgrimage. We're also going to have our seminarians with us, so it's going to be a ton of fun. If you or if you have people in your parish who are interested in going, um, by all means, I strongly encourage them to participate in, in the group group that we're organizing. You can find it on the website. It's dioceshelen.org slash national congress. The details on that, we are, uh, the the cost is going to be about $1,300 per person. That varies a little bit depending on whether or not you're traveling with a family and your age and things like that. But it's about $1,300 a person plus your air travel uh, getting to and from Indianapolis. The the cost of $1,300, what that includes is four nights hotel. It includes your ground transportation to and from the hotel and the convention center during during the week, and it includes your full access pass to the event, along with other incidentals with some meals and things like that that we'll be doing together. Um, so it's a great experience. We welcome people. This is really for all ages. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, and mark your calendar for that July 17th through the 21st, and then check the website or reach out to me if you have questions. 
Outstanding Youth Awards, those applications are due next Monday, March 4th. So youth ministers, please be nominating your outstanding seniors. This is a great way for parishes uh, to recognize and kind of honor those graduating seniors as they're moving on to college or wherever they're going after high school. So take that moment to, to nominate them and honor them. All of the nominees will be recognized at our Eucharist Congress at Carroll College, March 22nd through the 24th. And then we will have two winners, one male and one female. Each will receive a $500 scholarship, uh, courtesy of the Foundation for the Diocese of Helena. So this is a great way to honor those graduating seniors. So youth ministers or parents, if you have a high school senior, make sure that you nominate them and get that paperwork in uh, by next Monday. You can find information and the application online at dioceseofhelena.org slash outstanding youth award. We've got the last CYC board meeting of the year this weekend in Butte, March 1st through the 3rd. So I'm coordinating the final details on that. Uh, please, if you if you have a CYC board youth, please fill out that RSVP form that I sent out last week. That just helps me coordinate uh, plans for food and who's going to be there. I know that we got a lot of young people who are participating in the state basketball tournaments this weekend. So please be praying for them that they can bring home a championship and that they would compete well and stay safe. Uh, that's it for this week. As always, please pray for me. Pray for our bishop and together we'll all pray for our young people. God bless.